Hey, what's going on, nature freaks? What's up? Dave and Jeremy back in our studio with another Saturday slap in the face. Now, today we have an interesting topic. We're going to talk about how rattlesnakes' rattles work. Yeah, now it might not be the way that you think they work. It might be some crazy surprises that you're going to learn. Now, we don't have any live rattlesnakes in the studio. We just have this cool little corn snake hanging out with us to represent the snakes. What's up? But we do have plenty of rattles. Nature in your face! All right, guys, before we get into today's rattlesnake episode, we're going to be talking about today's sponsor, Coppertist. They make these really cool products made out of metal and different animal themes. Yeah, so they were kind enough to send us some free samples, hence the sponsor. And not only do they make these awesome rattle keychains, which if you compare this to an actual rattle, it's insane how much it looks like. It's segmented, it's beautiful craftsmanship, but they make other products that represent maybe the animals that are less loved. So they kind of promote conservation for animals like insects, reptiles, sea creatures that people find scary, but they do it in just a beautiful artistic way. So check them out. Yeah, in other words, they're just super cool. So. Happy to have these things on my keychain. Yeah, they even gave us this uh, awesome little tape measure. Day, which is like a chameleon. Ooh, look at that! Let it go, yeah. let it go, let it go. What up? All right. <laughs> so if you need to measure a lizard, I mean that's the way to do it. I don't there know. You go. <laughs> or whatever you feel like measuring. Oh yeah, anything. <laughs> all right, so let's get in to what this is all about: the meat and the potatoes. Okay. That's right. The rattles. Mm -hmm. Why don't you start us off, Dave? What you got for us? All right, well, first of all, guys, the rattle, as Jeremy mentioned, probably doesn't work like you think. It is not some hollow piece of plastic with little bees in it like a baby rattle. And it, in fact, it's made of loose, segmented pieces of keratin, which obviously is the same stuff that your fingernail and hair are made of. And when a rattlesnake is born, they are not able to rattle. That is because they're born with what's called a pre-button. On top of that pre-button, they have this cap. And they go through their first shed, the cap falls off, you got the first segment of the rattlesnake's rattle, and they will add onto that segment as they shed and grow. Yeah, now throughout their life, they're gonna add rattles and segments to that, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. But what people forget is those rattles, they break off once they get too long, especially if they're in a lot of, like a confrontation, rattling this huge long rattle to snap off, going through brush, it can get broken off, and they regrow. So you cannot use a rattlesnake's rattle to determine its age. That's one of the flaws there that people think, oh, it's got a super long rattle, it's gotta be super old, or it just hasn't lost its rattle yet. Now we've found massive eastern uh, diamondback rattlesnakes yep. in the Everglades. I mean, huge, probably what, four and a half, five foot rattlesnake, yep. thick, no rattle. Button. Yeah, well, 15 off. button yeah. or no rattle at all mm -hmm. because their rattle had broken off and they can't rattle, which is crazy. You, you, people think rattlesnake, it's gonna rattle. Well, not if the rattle is broken off, it can't do it. But once the rattlesnake gets a certain size, predators aren't gonna go near it just because of how big it is. And um, they get into that classic S position. So, you know, a big one, a baby one, doesn't even have that rattle until it gets a little bit older. They rely more on camouflage to hide from predators. It's not until they are a few months old that they are starting to produce that classic buzz sound that you guys hear. Yeah, so right out of mommy, can't even rattle. All right, they don't have the capability, they don't have the segments built up. So the segments, if you look at this cross section right here that we put on the screen, they're just layered and they smack each other while they're rattling. So there's not something, like you said, they're not hollow, full of beads. The segments are literally hitting each other. Now, how does the rattle move so fast? Um, we were researching this, mm -hmm. because if you think about, like, look at this, look how fast I can shake my hand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this rattle up. This is it. This is how fast I can do this. <laughs> okay, I mean, this, this is literally <laughs> it. Rattlesnakes don't sound like that. They're like, shh. They're moving so fast. So uh, yeah. you want to try to explain that if we can? Yeah, you know, picture a boxer on one of those punching bags. Not punching bags. Speed bags. Speed bags, yeah. right. It's the recoil that really produces that speed and little energy from you. Or as you mentioned earlier, one of those paddles with Paddle the ball, ball at yeah. the end. It takes very little effort to kind of make those go fast and it's just that recoil. So scientists believe that it's not so much the initial force, it's the recoil of the force in the muscles of the rattle at each end of the tail that actually produce that super fast and the endurance. I mean, they have to, yeah. sometimes they'll do that for, for 20, 30 minutes. So 
So it is pretty amazing to have the endurance as well as the speed, which is something a human would not be able to do. You can have one or the other. Right. They compared it to sprinting over a long distance run. You know, I mean, imagine sprinting, but not stopping. Like you just, you're going to do, you know, a marathon in a sprint the entire time. I mean, that would be oh. exert a lot of energy. You'd be exhausted. But when rattlesnakes rattle, they're not worn out. Their tail doesn't drag like, oh my gosh, I can't lift that the <laughs> next day. You know? And so what they were saying was instead of the muscle being tight and short and contracted the whole time like we would use to move, it's elongated potentially. Now this hasn't been proven 100%, but it's just a theory. So they almost throw it out there and then it's just that constant recoil and it's just snapping back and forth. And they said that they use their muscles as a break to control. Mm -hmm. Instead of letting it get completely out of control, they can slow it down, they can steady it, but the rattle is just basically slamming back and forth like that paddle ball you talked about. So it doesn't take a lot of effort, which is incredible. It, it really is. It. And if you've never heard a rattlesnake rattle, it is one of the most unique sounds in nature. And you can hear it from a considerable distance, especially the really big rattlesnakes like the Western Diamondbacks, your Eastern Diamondbacks, and some of the other larger species. But um, very, with, with the exception of a, uh, a pygmy, pygmy. Yeah. <laughs> don't you think a cicada is about to attack you or something like that? Because uh, they sound like a little buzzing insect instead. As far as the rattlesnake rattles, it's actually incredible. And, they, and what we don't know about that, I mean, think about the advances that we have in science with computer medicine, and we still aren't 100% I'm sure how a rattlesnake can rattle its, its tail so quickly, right? that blows my mind. And you I know? always tell people, if you knew what we knew and had as much experience as we had with these rattlesnakes, you would not fear them anymore. It's just amazing talking to people. They think we're absolutely crazy for going out and hiking and finding these animals and photographing them. The first thing they think of is, oh, you guys are going to die, you're going to get bit. Not like that at all. It's 100% safe. You do have to be careful, as I said, when you're walking through rattlesnake territory, but they do not go out of their way to harm you. You just have to appreciate these animals, what they are, and they're very valuable to the environment, regardless of the fact that they can be dangerous to people. Yeah, and if you knew what we knew about children, you would never go near a child again. You'd never have children. I mean, those things are vile, disgusting, carry diseases, totally kidding. And they um, <laughs> but we do have a pretty cool collection of rattles mm -hmm. um, from over the years now. We do not... Pull them off the live rattles. Pull them off or, or, you know, kill the snake for by any means. But we, we find a lot of roadkill, unfortunately. I even found, I got it right here, and I have it on a rock. This is the head <laughs> of a rattlesnake. It's chopped off. It's mummified. It was we sitting on We were taking a break, yeah. hiking in the desert. And I just happened to climb up, just messing around. And I was like, what is this? It's the head Mummified head of a rattlesnake. I have no idea how it got there. Still got a fang chilling right there. All right, guys. So as Jeremy mentioned earlier, you cannot tell the age of a snake by counting the segments on the rattle, but you can tell if it's a young or an old snake. If you look at this rattle here, you can see that it comes to a point, almost like a pyramid. That is an indication that the snake is young and it's still growing. If you look at this rattle, it's the same. The top is the same size as the bottom in terms of the segments. That is an indication that the snake is old and not growing anymore. All right, guys, that'll do it for this week's Saturday Slap in the Face. Get in the comments. Let us know if you live on the West Coast or even in Florida, somewhere down east where you have rattlesnakes. Let us know if you have any experience with them, if you've ever encountered one on a hike. Hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and we will see you on the next episode of Nature in Your Face.